everyone, it's Maria Young here and I thank all of my plant buddies and also my plant friends out there for joining me right here at My Orchid and also My Plant Adventures. And in today's episode folks, I got a special treat for you guys. Last week I was able to go to Plants and Pamperin. I wasn't able to give you a full thorough tour because they were extra specially busy. They were jam packed to the brim. But I did promise them that I would be back and I would give you guys a full tour so definitely stay tuned for that but I do have some snippets and some footage here and there that I would like to share with you and then of course I have to show you the phenomenal amazing unheard of plants that I got there at Plants and Pamperin. <laughs> These are some anthurium pipes and you also have some alopecias and right here it appears to be some form of raffidophora perhaps one of the shingling varieties and here's some bipennials and this right here the Florida Beauty great size on this one look at that I believe it is an anthurium disciples but I may be wrong but it sure does look like it but look at those patterns in here. Look at that, very pretty. And this one right here is a Grisil. And right here is the very famous Thai constellation. And how neat is this, guys? Look at the petiole, the stem area on this. You see that? How neat is the texture? Really crazy on this one. Right here is a Fibrosum. And what I like most about this right here if we take a close look, look at those furry petioles right there. Really good prices on these. This is the Jose Bono, seeing good variegations. And we can take a look, see over there. Here's one of their greenhouses. It's a little bit blocked off, so I don't think you can really go in there. But if you take a look, just a whole variety of plants in there as well. So many interesting varieties here that I've never seen before. And we also have some Birkins here. This one right here is labeled Gigantium. It kind of looks a little bit similar to the Jose Bono. But if you can take a look at the pattern on here, it's very speckled. And I've actually been looking for these right here. These are the Frydex. And as you can see with the extreme dark green in there. And that very creamy, extreme dramatic lines in there as well. Just very beautiful. Now that you guys have an idea of exactly what they have there, which is countless of plants, let me go ahead and show you exactly what I got there. Here we go, here we go, here we go now. So the very first plant that we're taking a look at right here, as you can see, is the beautiful Alocasia Ivory Coast right here. And what I do love the most is the fact that the leaves are not flimsy. I mean, look at there. I mean, there's quite a bounce 
a stiffness and a firmness to how they remain in position. So I definitely like that. You guys know that there's some alocasias, speaking of which, that are pretty flimsy and just flop here and there and everywhere. But this one right here, like I said, has some bounce but we'll go right back into position. What I also love about this alocasia is the colors on here. It's that very deep green in the backdrop. But if we take an even closer look, you're also going to notice a certain type of silver sheen casting on the overlay of the top of the leaves as well. But what I do love most and what really excites me is how that silver intensifies within the veining. I mean, it's like all of that silver is being concentrated into the lines and the veining of this leaf right here. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It is quite electrifying and it reminds me of lightning strikes. Do you see it, guys? And yet another fascinating feature that can be found within this alocasia is actually within the petioles and the stem area, as you can see right here. It has that very nice light burgundy color and also quite a nice modeling effect on there as well. And taking a look at the underside of the leaves, you will actually notice that some of the leaves have somewhat of an effect of spray paint being lightly sprayed with that beautiful burgundy color. So as you can see guys, so many wonderful and beautiful features of this particular alocasia right here and has so many wonderful details as well and is the very reason why I could not let this one go. This one right here guys, this one right here seriously takes my breath away. I mean, wow, we I have never seen anything like it. I love everything about it. Oh my goodness. So dramatic, so intense are the textures in this. Whew, I get so excited. I am telling you, look at that guys. Have you ever seen anything like it? I have not. And to even touch it in person, I can't even tell you guys. You have to get one for yourself so that you too can touch it, I'm telling you. But what I love is not only is the texture quite fabulous, but it has such a hardened top exterior, if that makes any sense. It has like a shell right here. It really has what I would consider what an armadillo would have, like a protective barrier that just really protects the plant. I'm gonna scratch. Can you hear me scratching it? That's how tough it is. So it's really a unique feature with all of the texture that you're seeing, that nice veining in there, but also those nice divots and those nice creases are just quite amazing. And then it has such a, I don't know, it's a smooth, silky, yet bumpy, sandpaperish texture. It's just so hard to explain. All I can explain it is with one word and it's the word phenomenal right here. Phenomenal. Oh my gosh, guys, I got so excited. I jumped right into the details. Guys, this is the gray dragon, also known as the Maharani. And wowie, folks, if I could even tell you what the color is like, I mean, you're getting different shading. So just depending on the age of the leaf, but know that each leaf does have a gray overlay effect to them. So as you're seeing in here, I think this is the older leaf. So you're now getting a greenish effect, but you are still seeing that beautiful gray. And these younger leaves right here, you definitely see that nice gray in there. But again, it just depends on how you're looking at this because it seems as if it changes colors. So it's like it has that duo color in there as well. And as I stated, extreme veining in there also. They say it is a gray dragon, but it almost looks silverish to me as well. So gray or silver, but whatever color you choose to imagine it to be, 
it is absolutely wonderful and again those textures oh my gosh wowee 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 i am so in love with this and i'm just so happy that i got it oh and let me not forget to mention as it gets older too as well you will notice that the backs will have that red color so it's beginning to get that red tinge to it as well so fascinating from start to finish and from front to back this is just a marvelous plant all the way around and is one of my faves love it love it love it okay guys so what we do have next is something very very exciting because i did not even know that it existed but it does and oh my oh me because up next we have this right here this right here is the variegated poly also known as the amazonica or the african mask take a look at this but this one as i stated is variegata Alrighty then, and because this is a variegated variety, you are going to notice a variation of colors in here as well. You are noticing that very light pastel green that moves into a medium green, and then of course, that very darkened, almost blackened green. And then you're going to notice a marbleized effect in there as well where you're seeing colors are bleeding through, you're seeing colors are being infused together and also just really combining well with one another. And I have to tell you, because this has that extreme and very dramatic veining in here, it actually gives this leaf somewhat of a stained glass effect as well. Do you guys see it? I just think it's so incredible and so many things going on with this leaf that it is just wow wow guys and this is just one of the leaves and then there was his evil twin <laughs> okay so in this one right here even though you're not seeing those variations of color as extreme as the other one you are noticing that there are two main colors it's that very darkened green almost black and then you're having that very light pastel creamy green in here as well and it looks almost more of a speckling effect than anything else but if you do take a closer look can you see that it almost looks like there's a lace overlay on here i don't know is it just me or is it just me but regardless to what it looks like very extreme in the contrast in this and still very very beautiful and i love the fact that there are two variations of variegations and patterns within these leaves. So amusing, guys. I absolutely love it. Now, guys, because I do have your more common poly right here, you guys know I do have to ask you for your opinion. So because they are both so very beautiful, so very dramatic and intense, I want to ask you guys, which one do you guys like more? Do you like the regular one or the variegated variety? Let me know in the comments below. And last but never, 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 never least is this one right here. As a matter of fact, it was the absolute mostest. At least it was wallet wise. This one right here, folks, is known as the Schismatoglottis Wallachii. And I have to tell you, it is such a wonderful and beautifully marked leaf so artistic in the way that it's created looking like this is an artist's sketch at the edging of the leaves right here not quite yet at the margin but near the margins of the leaf it definitely is quite beautiful it looks like a heart shape and then also an inner heart shape within as well and then you're also going to notice quite an extreme rippling effect in those leaves as well. Look at that pleating that's in here. It's so very beautiful, nicely textured. You can feel that pleating and also the gloss or the slippery effect. 
that it has on the leaf as well. So, so many things going on. This is one of the rarest varieties that they had there. As a matter of fact, they're only one of the few that have these. You don't normally see these in cultivation either as well. This is known to be more of a bog-like plant. It lives at the edges of marshy areas, so it does like a lot of humidity. So definitely you're going to have to provide it lots of moisture and humidity. And I believe I can get that within my garden. Fingers crossed, folks, because I can't bear to lose this very unique and hard to find variety right here. This is the Schismatoglottis Wallachii. Now you've got to tell me guys, which ones did you guys absolutely like the mostest? And if you had one to pick, which one would it be? Huh? Which one? Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and also extra special thank you to Abe and also Joe who took the time to answer all of our questions and also give us a brief tour of their actual garden that they have there as well. And I also want to give a very big shout out to Sue Lee of Sue Lee Orchids or Simply Orchids, a fellow YouTuber and also a friend of mine. It was a pleasure to meet and see you there and I hope to bump into you again very soon. And I do believe it is extra specially important, especially for people that live here in Florida, to check out areas that do have gardens and do have plants naturally growing in them because that will give you a great idea. Also inspire you because now you'll know exactly what plants grow well here in Florida and also in your outdoor conditions and in your gardens and landscape if you have an area to plant them. And also good news for the guys that don't live here in Florida. Well, you can also order via online as well. So definitely check them out online. I will be posting all of that information in the description where you can contact them directly. And there you have it folks. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you guys on my next adventure. Bye bye for now. Peace.